a face to match every mood, every job, every occasion. There are cheerful, smiling faces, round and open, ready to help celebrate any festivity. Sober faces, reflecting life's serious moments, gracing them with timeless dignity. Hard-working faces, with no fancy flourishes, built to do a job. Trendy faces that light up ads and headlines like shooting stars. Old familiar faces, easy on the eye and utterly reliable. Some types are full in the face, vigorously muscular or ponderously weighty. Other faces are thin, delicately chiseled or lean and hungry looking. There are faces just right for special occasions, whether it's a cosy family anniversary or a great national event. Razzmatazz faces for show business. Cool, crisp faces to chronicle the drama of the living stage. And there are all those exotic types, often with faces as beautiful as they are strange to our Western eyes. Clearly, the printed world is populated with thousands of different types, and to the untrained eye, many of their faces are the same. Not so. Just as in the human race, every face is different, so it is with type. Subtle the differences may be, but when there's a specific job to be done, there's usually only one face that fits. Where did this vast typographical family originate? Well, artists were decorating the walls of their homes with simple pictograms many thousands of years ago. Gradually, these pictures evolved into ideograms, graphic symbols that resembled or represented well-known objects and actions. Next came a giant step, the invention of phonograms. These signs represented sounds, and they could be strung together to form words and phrases. Amongst them were the letters of our Latin alphabet. Writing could now develop into an art form, and it did, with the design of beautiful letter shapes and scripts. But it wasn't until the 15th century, around the start of the Wars of the Roses, that it became possible to reproduce these writings for all to read. The key to this epoch-making development was Gutenberg's invention of movable type, individual letters cast in metal that could be used over and over again. It was a true revolution, and by the end of the century, documents, tracts, and even books were being printed in a variety of typefaces. Over the next four centuries, print technology advanced steadily, and with it came dozens of new typefaces. Virtually all of these faces were designed with loving care by dedicated craftsmen, and many of them are recognizable ancestors of the typefaces we use today. Then in 1886 came another revolution. Ottmar Mergenthaler invented the Linotype mechanical typesetting machine, and in 1900, Linotype entered into a partnership with leading type founder David Stempel. As a result, D. Stempel AG became the German manufacturer of matrices for linotype composing machines. From this fruitful association has come a long line of superb typesetting machines, each representing the current state of the art, together with a library of original and high quality typefaces. True to tradition, linotype has consistently worked with the world's leading typeface designers. Artists like Otto Ekman, F.W. Kleukens, Rudolf Koch, Paul Renner, Hermann Sapf, Hans Eduard Meyer, and seen here discussing a new type concept, Adrian Frutiger. Through its association with such rare talents and expertise, Linotype has set and maintained standards of accuracy and quality which are unsurpassed throughout the world. The design and production of a new typeface is a long and painstaking task. Traditionally, it begins with the drawing up of individual letters at 800 point, using the type designer's original drawings. Allowance is made for optical illusion, which can make accurately drawn verticals and circles look distinctly odd. Blackups of the optically corrected letters are produced and then combined in standard sequences to check for fit and compatibility. Each letter and alphabetic sequence is scrutinized critically to see how well it performs in different point sizes. Friskets are then cut by hand, character by character, 
using a scalpel, a set of French curves, and a lot of skill. The friskets are mounted on a revolving drum and scanned at a very high resolution. This produces numerical information which is converted into master digital data. An ingenious computer-aided design program called Icarus can be used instead to convert the typeface originals to digital form and, using this data, to plot other weights and interpolations automatically. Using a digitizing table, the operator plots a series of points around each character and, from these, Icarus calculates the contours. It's rather like yacht building, where the shape of the hull is created by slotting long pieces of wood between pairs of guide nails. Once all the characters have been input, Icarus will assist in the design of other weights and faces, expanded, condensed, outline, even shadow faces, outputting them as drawings, as digital data ready for editing or as friskets. From this data, a plotter printer produces hard copy for editing and correction. These drawings are carefully scrutinized, marked up and checked. Then on-screen enlargements of the characters are called up one by one, using the same master digital data. A technician scrolls around these images, editing the letters in accordance with the marked up drawings and resaving the corrected digital data. A further quality check ensures that no corrections have been missed. The edited data is now run through a further computer program to produce master font data for specific linotype typesetting machines. There's still one more check. Before the master font data is passed to the linotype library, the performance of the new font is proved on each individual model of typesetter to make sure it works as the designer intended. It's all part of Linotype's belief that machines and computers, however sophisticated, are merely tools for man to express his artistry and imagination. The Linotype library now contains more than 1,500 individual typefaces, and to speed delivery, accurate copies can be sent over the telephone lines to Linotype agents all over Europe. 1,500 faces to match every move every job, every occasion. And the number of faces is growing year by year. You're face to face with progress when you use the Linotype Library.